couple of things I, I want us to understand uh, out of this passage. The first thing is this. Jesus assumes they're fasting. Verse 16, whenever you fast. Verse 17, when you go and fast. Jesus is already assuming that they are fasting. So it's not that Jesus is against fasting. Jesus was against, wasn't against giving at the front end of this chapter. He wasn't against prayer in the, in the next section of the chapter. And he's not against fasting in this third section of this chapter. Because he's assuming that you're doing it. He didn't have to say, okay, you need to fast. He's assuming that you're doing it already. He was assuming his disciples, he was assuming his followers were already involved in fasting. Religiously speaking, there were fasts going on all the time. The Pharisees, who he's pointing out here is the hypocrites, they would, all, they would do it a lot on Thursdays, and if they were really religious, they added Tuesdays. But the thing is, everybody knew that. And they liked it that way. They wanted everybody to notice. They wanted everybody to see it. Oh, Judah, what's wrong with you today? Oh, I'm fasting. I'm skipping. I'm not eating. My stomach is grumbling, but don't worry about me. I'm fine. You go ahead. No, 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 no. You go ahead and eat. I know I'm at the table, but it's okay. I mean, you know, they, they did that. They did it for show. I'm not saying everybody did it for show, but obviously there were enough doing it for show. Jesus brought it up. And he said, don't go around looking like that. Don't crawl out of bed and get about your day's business and everybody... Like, what's wrong with you? But he's assuming that you're fasting. But he says, I don't want you to do it this way. I don't want you to do it the way that they're doing it. That's what he says. For they make their faces unattractive so that their fasting is obvious to people. Make their faces unattractive. What does that mean? Here, here, here's what I think it kind of means. When you feel really good and you're having a great day, take a picture of yourself and, or, or somebody else in your house. And when they're not feeling good or they're in a really bad mood or everything has gone awfully all day long and you catch them in that moment, take their picture and then compare them. We all know the difference, don't we? When we've had a bad day, everybody seems to know that. Why? Because our face changes. The Bible uses the term countenance they, about Cain. Cain didn't have it right, and he didn't offer the right stuff, and he didn't do the right thing. And then, but Abel, his offering was accepted. And he says, why is your countenance like that? What's your face like that for? These, these hypocrites, as Jesus would call them, they, they'd be on their fast, and everybody knew it. And what's interesting is that Jesus says they've got all the reward they're going to get. Because honestly, they're not seeking God intentionally. That's all the reward they're going to get. The recognition by their friends and family that they're actually doing that. That's the reward they're going to get. That's not the purpose of fasting. The purpose of fasting is to seek God intentionally while you're doing that. So he assumes that they're fasting. And then he said, I don't want you to do it like that. I don't want you to do it like the way you're seeing all of these people over here doing it. Wouldn't it have been great if he'd actually done that on a Thursday? You know, Jesus has a way sometimes. Gee, if you notice how Jesus teaches, he, you know, he teaches in a boat about stuff. He teaches by the beach about stuff. And he's up on a mountain and he's teaching about stuff. It would not have surprised me if he'd have pulled this one out on a Thursday and said, whenever you fast, don't do it like that. 
this is how I want you to do it. What's he say? But when you fast, put oil on your head, wash your face. Now, see, that's odd to us, isn't it? We don't understand that. What do you mean put oil on my head? How are people not going to know that I have oil on my head? Obvious too, right? But see, we don't live in that time. We don't live in that culture. We don't know that context. They need it. They would put oil on their head as moisturizer. Put lotion on. Put gel in your hair. Get up, get dressed, wash your face, comb your hair, take care of things, get about your day, and do it, but don't let anybody know that you're doing it. Well, what's the point of that? Because it's not about you. It's not about them. It's about God. And you want to take time to the greatest way that you can, you want to take that time and spend it with God. So if you're fasting at breakfast, you spend that with the Lord. If you're fasting at lunch, you, you, you spend that time with the Lord. Well, how am I supposed to do that and not let anybody know? I mean, let, me tell you, let me tell you what's going to happen. This is, I, I, invariably, this is what's going to happen. You're going to choose to set aside this one day. You're going to pick a, a Tuesday. I'm, I'm going to fast on Tuesday at lunch because I really want to seek God intentionally. I really want to do this, and I want to make sure that I'm going to spend that quality time. It's not my quiet time. I already had that. This is special time. This is extra time. I don't want to spend it before the Lord. You know what's going to happen Tuesday at lunch at your work? They're going to bring in the barbecue trucks. You know what's going to, you're going to, you're going to say, you know what? Okay, next week I want to do it on Thursday. You know what you're going to hear about on Friday? The big gathering that we're all going to have lunch together on Thursday as a whole unit. We're going to eat together. Of course it's going to happen. Well, how do you get out of that? You got a plan. You got to think about that. You know, some of your friends, some of your coworkers may understand, and you you can express to them what you're trying to do. You you may not have an, an environment where that can happen. You 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 may not be something that you can really talk about, and you just need to you know figure out what you want to do. You got to plan for that because let me tell you, it's going to happen. Anytime you want to do right, the devil's right there to tempt you to do something else. Every time. Every time. So when you plan a fast or, you know, you, you say, well, maybe it's not a meal. Maybe it's, you know, something, you know, that you, you want to fast from. Whatever it is in your life. Maybe it's fasting chocolate. Maybe it's fasting caffeine. Nobody wants to know when you're fasting. Everybody's going to know when you're fasting caffeine. You know, maybe it's, it's fasting a TV show. Maybe it's fasting from social media for a period of time. Remember, it's a giving up of something for a period of time in order to seek God intentionally. The Catholics do this 40 days before Easter every year. You know what it's called? Lent. They do it. It's great. We don't do it in the Baptist church. Sometimes I think maybe we should. Why? Because the intention of it is this, to give up something for these 40 days so that I can focus on God preparing for Resurrection Sunday. The biggest day of the year in the church, right? So they want to prepare for that. Maybe you've got a big decision that you're needing to make. And maybe you need to set aside something. Give up something. Maybe it's a partial fast where you want to give up something that you really like, but you want to give it up for a period of time for a specific purpose, and that is to seek God intentionally during that time. So maybe it's a TV show. Maybe it is you know, an outing that you're accustomed, maybe, it, maybe it's a food item, maybe it's a drink item, maybe it's some, something on, on technology, I don't know. That's up to you. How and what are you going to do to seek God intentionally? Because I think that we, along with so many others, 
it, we get into a routine of our life, and it can be great routines. You, it can be a great routine, but it can still become a routine. Fasting periodically breaks up that rhythm a little bit. It breaks up that routine a little bit because now I'm choosing, I'm consciously choosing to give something up with the intent to seek God in those moments. This is what Jesus is calling us to. This is what He is asking of us to do. You've got some big decision that you've got coming up. I mean, who knows what that decision is? It could be a job-related decision. It could be a school-related decision. It could be a decision about your, your parents that you're having to decide as your parents are aging. Maybe it's a health-related issue that you're having to make a decision about. Maybe something's weighing on you. Maybe you're anxious about something that's coming up. Maybe your heart just hurts over what may be happening in this area or that area. And, and you want to seek God for His wisdom and His counsel and His guidance through and how to navigate through that particular moment in your life. Or maybe you just are feeling you know, I'm not as close to God as I want. I can look back on a time I was really close to God, but the events and the circumstances and just life kind of got in the way, and I love God and I love Jesus. I just don't feel as close as I once did. Maybe this is a great opportunity for you to go on a fast and to say, I want to spend X amount of days giving up this in order to seek God intentionally. I'm leaving a lot of those things blank because you need to figure out what it is that God wants you to give up. What is it that's causing you so much distraction spiritually? What is it that's causing you so much headache and heartache in your life? Maybe that is something that needs to happen. And it's challenging. Because the very thing that God may want you, you know, it, it, don't pick the things that are easy. To, you know, I'm going to stop buying mid-level fuel. I'm going to fast on mid-level fuel. I'm only going to buy the cheap gas for the next month. No! If it doesn't hurt a little, you're not doing it right. You might fast from the cheap gas and go pay the expensive, I don't know, anyway. But if it doesn't hurt a little bit, if there's, if there's not some pain involved, I mean, if you remember, David, David went to, uh, to the vineyard, and he needed to make a sacrifice to, to, to deal with some things. And they wanted to sell him. They, they said, no, I'm going to give you, let me just give you this. I'll give you my land. I'll give you. And David said, no, I can't just take it from you. Because if it doesn't cost me something, then it's not worth anything. I, I, I need to pay you for the field. I need to pay you for this moment. I need to pay you. I need to give that up. In fasting, it's the same kind of thing. Think about what is it that you've got coming up? What is there a languishing in your life? What is the problem that you're dealing with? Maybe it's a relationship issue. Maybe it's an e economy issue. Maybe it's a spiritual, maybe it's a major decision, maybe it's grief, it's loss, it's I don't know where to go from here moment. Man, how many of those do we have on the regular? I have no idea what to do with this. And we pray, and then we don't know why I don't have any answers. Lord, help me. And then we go about our life. Lord, I need you. We go about, Lord, I need direction. I wonder how many of the dumb decisions that I've made in my life could have been thwarted had I just spent time fasting before the Lord to understand better what He wanted. Because so often good gets in the way of great. I make good decisions, but maybe if we'd have spent time praying and fasting, great decisions could have been made. 
It's the same that's in our, in our own life. Do I retire? Do I not retire? Do I change jobs? Do I change schools? Do I change majors? What do we do? What, what, what am I supposed to do with grandma and grandpa? I don't know what to do with them. How, how, do, how do we handle end-of-life decisions? What am I supposed to do financially? How can I put money away? What, what, inflation's 9.1%. How am I supposed to live with that? What am I supposed to do? We at church, offerings are down, expenses are up. What do we do with that? How do we handle that? Attendance is, is, is stagnant. We want more. What do we do with that? We have a whole community of people. How am I supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? Maybe individually and corporately, we need to go on a fast to give up something on purpose for the purpose of seeking God intentionally. This is what Jesus is saying. He already assumes you're doing it. He said, just don't do it this way. Do it this way. Maybe God's leading you and challenging you today for a fast. You know the decisions that are coming. You know the stresses you're dealing with. You know the anxieties that you face. Maybe clarity if we would just fast. Let me pray. Father, you challenged us this morning in an area that is unusual to us. It's a little foreign. God, we don't understand fasting. We don't get fasting. We don't do fasting. We do it for weight loss. We do it because it's cool. We do it because our friends are doing it. But Father, I'm not sure that we often do it so that we can seek you with intentionality. So Father, as you are challenging us, I pray that your spirit would move among us and poke and prod us a little bit in the areas of growth and development, decision making, emotional upheavals that we're struggling with today. And we don't have an answer, and we don't know what to do, we don't know where to go with it. And Father, maybe we need to, to engage in this. So I, I pray, God, that Your Spirit would reveal to each of us individually if You want us to go on a fast, and God, I pray that we would commit to that. And God, I pray that You would continue, show us what You want us to fast from, and how long you want us to do that. And God, show up for us in that area. I'm so thankful, Father, that you will just take us as we are. But you love us too much to leave us there. You take us where we need to be. I pray, God, that we would do it willingly and offer ourselves to you in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we stand and sing together, maybe you need to spend a moment in prayer at your seat or one of the front seats, or if you just want to do what you need to do. But just take this moment and let's just consider the things of God right now. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to
seated for just a second. I'll just go over a couple of announcements with you uh, this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, this Wednesday night, uh, we're going to have a, a big childhood uh, event as we are following up and having a follow-up party with, uh, with the children and across uh, all this year's events and things of that nature. So uh, let everybody know it's not just for the kids that have been on our campus, but for, but for all the kids. And that'll be six o'clock this Wednesday, just uh, to let you know that that is coming and I uh, hope that you uh, would remember that. Uh, and uh, if you can't be here, be in prayer for that event that we can build relationships and we can invest in some lives together. Uh, we do have small groups that meet at 9.45 on Sundays and would love to have you uh, take the next step with us. Maybe you've been coming to worship for a while. Uh, take the next step and get into a small group. We have a number of them. Be happy to visit with you uh, about those uh, if, if you have any questions about that as well. We are uh, starting a hospitality team back. We're building that back. Uh, so if you are interested in that, please let us know. You can call the office or you can uh, email us or let us know or fill out the form that was sent out to the church body uh, this last week and say, yes, I, I could help out in some of these ways uh, and be, be a part of uh, the process of that goes on uh, around here uh, throughout the week and each weekend. Uh, we had a great uh, community engagement event at the uh, Bicentennial event on July 9th, and everybody uh, that helped be a part of that, we're thankful for that. Uh, we have been in contact, Tim has been in contact uh, with uh, both the police chief and the fire chief, uh, and working out a way that we can just invest with them and help them and love them and show kindness to them uh, on a regular basis. And so the thought right now is that uh, one month, We'd provide one meal to the police department, uh, and then the next month we'd provide one meal to the fire department, and then we just go back and forth. And uh, there, more information will come out about that. But maybe your Sunday school department could just take one of those, and it's just kind of a potluck thing. You just make some food, take it down there. We'll give you the specifics on the number of how many, or maybe. A couple of different departments need to put that together, uh, but it's looking at that as an opportunity once a month to let them know that we, we care for them and we're, we're grateful for the work that they do and just to connect uh, with the, the police and the fire department uh, in, our, in our community. So 
uh, be thinking about that, and we, as more details emerge, we will be certain to let you know. But that, that's something we're working on to continue to engage in our community. Uh, also, if you uh, have been in choir, we know we've had some time off. Uh, but Wednesday night, uh, rehearsals will begin again. So just to let you know, rehearsals will be at 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights. And so that's, we're coming back into uh, that regular opportunity as well. Is it 7.15? Okay, 7.15. If Bill would get out on time, you could start at 7. But uh, no, I tease. He's not here, so that's why I can tease him. Um, but uh, anyway, 7.15, choir will get back. Uh, one of the things that's uh, also coming up as we approach school again, I mean, that's coming, it's four weeks away, uh, we're one, uh, the childhood uh, ministries are, gonna, are starting back on a regular Wednesday schedule. Uh, and so I know Angela will be looking for volunteers and helpers uh, with that uh, as we seek to minister uh, through Vacation Bible School. Praise God, we had a lot of parents asking, hey, do you have something on Wednesday nights? And we're like, we can, yes. Uh, and so we're, uh, we're looking to get that started back, so uh, be in prayer for that. Uh, encourage Angela as she is setting those things up and getting prepared for those things, uh, and that would, be, uh, that would be very helpful. If you filled out one of our Connect cards, we do ask if you would to put it in one of the black boxes, these two here, or two as you exit out the back, just letting us know that you were with us. You can also put your tithe and offering in those boxes as well. We have many ways that you can give your tithe or your offering. You can do it physically in the boxes. You can give it online. You can mail it in uh, or any of those or bring it by the office. We can receive those in so many different ways, but we are uh, thankful to, to receive those. Um, one more thing, and then we uh, will be dismissed this morning. Uh, I, I want you, I'm asking you to be in prayer for Keith uh, as we, yes, I remember that now. Be in prayer for, oh, I'll say, all I have to have is this, and I remember exactly what I'm supposed to announce. Be in prayer for Keith. Tomorrow starts his sabbatical. Uh, after seven years of full-time ministry, we allow for a sabbatical. He actually went eight years. Uh, and so he's going to be on sabbatical, uh, developing and thinking and learning through uh, a lot of different things. So just pray for him. Uh, as he, he's finishing vacation up today following camp, and he'll begin his sabbatical. And so uh, just be in prayer for him uh, and the family as they are l transitioning through and what the Lord wants them to do in that transitional time and, and developing that process. So uh, do ask that you be in prayer for him. Facilities had a meeting at 3. Did you hear all my words? had a meeting at 3. Uh, they will not be meeting today, uh, but look in your email box for something that's coming your way. So uh, it'll be coming your way today, uh, and then uh, it'll have explanation to you facilities, so just be aware of that, uh, that it's coming, and then uh, our, our chair will set up the next meeting for discussion on that uh, document that we have. So uh, thank you all for being with us. It's been a, a great day. Uh, welcome back, Jess. Thank you for being with us. Let me pray, and then we will be dismissed this morning. Father God, I thank you uh, for your blessing, and I thank you for your presence today. And Father, as we struggle in our humanity, you offer us all of who you are. I pray, God, that we would seek you with intentionality. That we would seek you with our whole heart and our whole mind. and show Jesus to our neighborhoods. In his name we pray, amen.